Now over the gate there was written, Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. He knocked, therefore, more than once or twice. May I now enter here? Will he within open to sorry me, though I have been an undeserving rebel? If so, then shall I not fail to sing his lasting praise on high. At last there came a grave person to the gate named Goodwill. Who knocks there? A poor burdened sinner fleeing unto Mount Zion from the city of destruction. With that he quickly opened the gate, and when Christian was but beginning to enter in, he gave him such a mighty jerk so as to nearly bring him sprawling upon the ground. Dear sir, what did you mean by giving me such a violent jerk? Heard thee not the many thumpings on the door immediately as soon as it was shut fast behind thee? Aye. Open a little and peek thee out the crack to see what they were. <gasps> Fiery darts! Aye. Arrows. Stabbed into the door! Aye. And for whom were these messengers of death sent? For thee, dear traveler, for thee. Whence came they? Look. Careful now. Not too wide. <gasps> Do you see that strong castle erected but a short distance from this gate? Aye. Tis the castle of the enemy, of which Beelzebub himself is the captain. It is? And from its walls he... And they that be with him shoot arrows at those that come up to this gate, if haply they may kill them ere ever they be entered in. Then have I great cause to rejoice and tremble. Aye, indeed. But tell me, how is it that ye came all alone? Because none of my neighbors saw their danger as I saw mine. Did any of them know you were coming? Oh, yes. Almost the entire town. But did none of them follow you to persuade you to go back? Yes, both obstinate and pliable. But when they saw that they could not prevail, obstinate went railing back. But pliable came with me until we came to the slough of despond, into which we both suddenly fell. You must have taken your eyes off of the light. So I did. What then? Then was my neighbor pliable discouraged, and would not venture farther. Alas, poor man! Is the celestial glory of so little esteem with him, that he counted it not worth running the hazard of a few difficulties to obtain it? Truly, if the truth be known, I am no better than he. Why so, say? Went he not back, and came you not on? Tis true. He went on back to his own house. But I also turned aside to go into the way of death. To the town morality? Yes. Directed thereto by the carnal arguments of one Mr. Worldly Wiseman, I suppose. How did you know? This wicked one doth attack nearly all with his carnal reasoning. And frankly... There be few that escape his snare. Then have I all the more reason to be thankful to my Lord. He would have had you to seek for ease at the hands of Mr. Legality, I suppose. Aye. Very cheats, the both of them. But say on, did you truly take his vile counsel? Yes, at least as far as I durst. I was nearly crushed by the weight of that fearful mountain. That mountain has been the death of many, and will be the death of many more yet, who shall seek to enter in by the works of their own hands. It is well that you escaped being by it dashed into pieces. And so now am I come, more fit for death by that mountain than thus to stand talking with my lord. But oh, what a favor this is to me, that unworthy me, should yet be admitted entrance here. We make no objections against any. Against none? None. Notwithstanding all that they have done before they come hither, they are in no wise cast out. Thank God. Yes. Now, therefore, good Christian, come a little with me, and I will teach thee about the way 
Thou must go. Look, before thee, dost thou see this narrow way? Aye. That is the way thou must go. But it is so narrow. It was cast up by the patriarchs, the prophets, Christ, and his apostles. But it is so narrow. It was wide enough for Christ. Truly? Aye. Then it be wide enough for me. It is called by our Lord the straight way, and was laid out so by himself. This is the way thou must go. But are there not turnings, nor windings by which a stranger may lose his way? Nay, none. But there are many ways that join down upon this one, they all being wide and easy of travel. Then I shall be confused. Nay, for only the right way is straight and narrow. Then the wayfaring man, though a fool, need not err therein. None need err. Now it is time to be off on thy journey. One thing, dear Goodwill. Being? Canst thou help me off with this burden upon my back? For I can by no means get it off myself. Neither is there any to help me. No, thou must be content to bear it until thou comest to the place of deliverance. For there it will fall from thy back of itself. When shall this be? Sooner than you think, and longer than you wish. Only be content with thy Lord's timing. Then let me gird up my loins and address myself to my journey. What lies ahead next? When you have gone some distance from this gate, you will come to the house of the interpreter. What do I there? Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Seek his wisdom, and ye shall find. Ask for help, and it will be given unto you. Thank you, dear Goodwill. God be with thee. Fare thee well, good Christian. God speak.